what uh, we call in English a silver bullet. It's not going to be one thing. It's actually going to be many, many different things. So I'm really happy to be introducing, uh, there's going to be four different people joining me on stage today. Um, and the first one is going to be Florent from Surfrider, who's going to take you on his, uh, his journey and his organization's journey about how they have been working on one of the solutions that can help us crack the problem of ocean pollution. So I'm going to uh, welcome uh, F uh, Florent on the stage if you'd like to join us and if we'd like to welcome him on the stage. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. And I will leave Florent to introduce himself and his organization. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm very grateful to be here to have the opportunity to share with you the vision of my NGO, Software Foundation Europe, about ocean pollution, but also about solutions, of course. So let me maybe start with a, a brief presentation of Software as an NGO. I'm going to really be brief, but I think it's important for you to better understand who we are, what we are doing, and maybe to better understand some positioning that we have and uh, action that we are proposing also. So, um, let's see if it, yes. My president loves to say that surfers is the only animal that when he comes out from the water on the ocean, he can speak, he can talk to others, he can explain what is happening and the pollution. And this is how everything started 30 years ago now. A group of angry surfers that decided to gather to get mobilized and uh, that started playing a role as a whistleblower to raise awareness, to ask leaders, to ask citizens to realize what is happening just to protect their playground as a first step. This was 30 years ago, as I was saying. 30 years later, we have grown up and now we are presenting uh, Yes, I just forgot to tell you that everything started in the southwest of France in Biarritz. This is where our headquarters is. This is where I'm working with most, uh, the, the biggest part of, of the team. But now we are working in 12 countries over the U Europe, and we are able to be at the field, at the ground, doing some um, um, uh, beach cleanup, for instance. But more than that, just seeing what is happening it's really important to have uh, data also. Um, we are, all, all, of course, raising awareness quite a lot, having educational programs with kids, with young guys, with adults also, with all citizens. But uh, also a big part of our, of our action is uh, doing lobby. Lobby for general interest, of course, but lobby for, um, towards uh, institutional leaders for policies, changing policies, and lobby towards also a uh, corporate sector to make them change in some of their industrial uh, processes. So, okay, this was a brief presentation of the organization of Surfrider. I uh, have a lot of my team members that are here and the staff, so if you want to have some more information, you can go to the website, of course, or just go to the stand that we have over there to have some more information. So what a big challenge. Now I have to present ocean pollution, the different challenges that we have. So what are we speaking about? In Surfwater, we plan the activities around three main thematics, three main issues that we have in the ocean. The first one, we've been speaking about it now, uh, just before, during the uh, two uh, last days or, or, or day before, Marine litter, more than all plastic pollution. 90% of the marine litter are in plastic. I think that we already all know more or less the big figures of that issue. So I won't be too long. But you have to know that plastic is now everywhere. In the ocean, on, in the ground, but even in our body, we are eating plastic. plastic when it comes into the ocean or in the nature, it splits from macro to microplastics, from micro 
to nanoplastic, and then it ends up in our body. We all have plastic inside our body. So again, I won't be too long on, or, or, or about all the figures on, on, on the problematics. I just wanted to share with you um, our position, our vision of the problem. There is a tap of plastic pollution that is open. We really have to put all our efforts, means, uh, money, investment, everything, for closing that tap of plastic pollution. Okay? So, cleaning the ocean, of course, it can be of a good idea, maybe in the future, but now we do think that we have to put all our effort, investment, and money in closing that tap of plastic pollution. The second thing I wanted to share with you is that how can we close that type of plastic pollution? We have to go at the source. We have to stop producing so much plastic and consuming so much plastic. So the long-term solution is to reduce our production and consumption of plastic, to refuse plastic. Recycling, economy circular are also good things. But first, we have to refuse and to reduce the amount of plastic that we are producing and consuming. It's really important for you. We always say that the only good waste is the waste that does not exist, that has never been produced. Okay? This is the, I would say, the visible part of the pollution, of the ocean pollution, the solid part. But we also have, sorry, this is the most important uh, uh, ki kind of plastic that you can find in the ocean. But yes, there is not only that, uh, that uh, visible part of the pollution, you have also the invisible part of the solution. The pollution that you cannot really see when you enter in the ocean. I'm speaking, we spoke just before of the microplastic, it's part of it. But also you have bacteriological pollution. We've been working on that issue since many, many years in Sofredo. We obtained a big victory in 2006. The uh, European Commission implemented a new directive at that time regarding bathing water and asking and demanding all member states to have a surveillance program on that. And really, we have a big improvement on that situation. A lot of local authorities and governments invest a lot in developing some uh, um, sanitation plant and so on. And uh, the uh, quality of uh, water uh, uh, is better. We still have some big issues in link with rainwaters and the runoff of rainwaters. I will come back to that a little bit later. But the uh, biggest challenge, we think, for this invisible pollution is the chemical pollution. And when we go to chemical pollution, in fact, we do not have any data, really. We do not know anything, what is happening you will find any single chemical molecule in the ocean. But is it dangerous for the ecosystems? Is it dangerous for human health? We don't really know. And you may have heard about the cocktail effect of, of, also, no? One molecule maybe is not really dangerous, the other one neither, but the two together can have a, a damage on ecosystems or, or human health. So this is the second big challenge we, when we talk about ocean pollution. And the third one, it deals with coastal management. We would love to have only this kind of coastal management, no? Of, course, of, of um, uh, coastlines. But usually we have a lot of uh, urbanized uh, areas on the coastline. Two problems. The first one, of course, if we have a lot of urbanized areas on the coastline, it has direct damage on the ocean because of the runoff of rainwaters, or as I was saying. It's the first um, uh, reason of ocean pollution right now. When it rains, it comes down in the, in the streets, it finishes in the rivers, it always ends up in the ocean. So it comes, th this rainwater comes with chemical pollution, bacteriological pollution again. But there's another aspect uh, another issue regarding coastal management. It's in link with climate change. There's a lot of strategy and projects that are taking place right now dealing with adaptation to climate change or mitigation of climate change, renewable energy, 
to protect from sea level rise, these kind of things. It is uh, transforming our coastline massively, and we are not really prepared. Even the citizens that are living on the coastlines are not really prepared. Even if they know it, they can admit it, but when it comes to a big change in their day-to-day -day life on, on the seaside, they don't want that change. And we cannot get opposed to this kind of strategy. So we have to maybe just uh, make a surveillance and accompany these kind of projects to limit their damages on the ocean on the coastline. So this is a big global overview of ocean pollution. I know that Adam was uh, willing to have also our feelings about all that, no? Well, in part of that feeling is the same of that little girl, I guess. The message is really impactful, I think, because it's really simple. But it's really simple and it's the truth. I think we've been mistaken since many, many years saying that we have to protect the planet. No, we have to protect ourselves on the planet. The planet will survive to us. But will we be able to survive on that planet and, and in which conditions? So this is this feeling of emergency. It's quite, a, I would say, pessimistic feeling. But on the other hand, I'm also quite optimistic. I'm optimistic, I think, first because it's my nature. I think I was born optimistic and I remain optimistic. And actually, I think it's quite an important quality when you are working in an NGO, no? When you think that you can change the world, you have to be optimistic. Um, the second reason also is because things are changing and have changed all over the, the 30 years, but also in the more recent uh, past. One example. 2015, it was COP21 here in, in Paris, and we had the first directive coming from the European uh, Commission asking state members to reduce, only to reduce their quantity of and the production of single-use plastic, and only some single-use plastic, not all of them. It was really disappointing for us. Three years later, at the end of 2018, we have a new directive coming from the EU asking and demanding to ban, to ban a lot of uh, single-use plastic items. It's not enough, but it's great progress and improvement, uh, I think. And last thing why I'm optimistic is because we have all of us some solutions. At least in South Carolina, we can propose some concrete solutions and that also what I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to present three of the project of the activities that we are uh, managing. And um, these projects have all a link with you as a citizen, as a consumer, for instance. So coming to concrete solutions. First, the first project I wanted to share with you uh, aims to monitor marine litter and we are going to do it with the support of AI, artificial intelligence. You can have the presentation with my colleagues over there about that. We have the support and we got the support of Microsoft that, that is bringing to us their experts in AI. And why do we need this AI? We have volunteers. We are able to go in the rivers, do kayak, and see what is happening, take photos, pictures, and so on. But if we want to have a map of all the problematics in Europe, in all the rivers, we need their program and we need this AI program because after taking the videos, it comes uh, in automatically in that program and we have the results of the quantity of marine, of liters uh, in, in, in the different rivers. So monitoring is really important because it helps us when, it, when we, uh, we, we go to um, the EU, when we go to the um, uh, French um, environmental ministry or, or even at local level, no? It's important to bring data. When we ask for change, when we ask for new directives, for new laws, they won't listen to us just because, I don't know, we are software or we are cool. They want data and we have to bring them data. And also it's important to follow what is happening. 
things are changing, new rules are, are, are coming, new directive. Do we really have an effect uh, on, on, at the ground level? So this is why we have this kind of project. It's called Plastic Origins. And again, you can get involved in it by doing, by volunteering. It's really hard, no? You will have to go kayaking in some rivers uh, near your house. So don't hesitate to contact us for that. This is the app. You can see just the way we can take videos just with your mobile phone. And then the program will automatically detect the different kind of uh, litter that we can find, no? The final objective is to have this kind of map, not only for France, but for all Europe, maybe all over the world, and to present this kind of map to, again, European Union, local authorities, and governments. The second activity I wanted to share with you is an app. We already heard a lot of apps, and we are all developing a lot of apps. So why this one for us is important. Um, I was saying we, are, um, we have a lot of um, activities and projects, raising awareness, educational programs. We receive some schools and some kids. We go to schools, we go to universities, and just sharing information, sharing our knowledge, raising awareness. But I think it's sometimes not enough. So we have also to help people go into the change and to, to, to change their day-to-day -day, uh, habits in, in, in some ways, no? This app is dedicated to that. You will find in that app 25 challenges to go towards a day-to-day zero-waste life. It's like, uh, it's fun, I think, no? You can uh, see your progression, you can also see how other people are improving are you following them or not, and so on. So you can compare your habits to others. And we already have about 100,000 users of that app. So please go to your app store, download it, use it, and share it with your friends and with your family. It's really easy, and it can make a great change and a big change on the uh, plastic pollution in the ocean. And the last one, the last project I wanted to share with you it's about shipping. Wow. Why shipping? First, you have to know that 80 to 90% of goods transportation all over the world is done by shipping, marine transport. And also, we've made a consultation about two years ago, I think, right now, and we saw that citizens are really in that uh, wheel of uh, having, um, uh, I would say, um, information about what is happening on the transportation of the goods of the products. I'm sure that you are all happy when you go to the supermarket and you buy a coffee coming from Colombia with fair trade uh, a label, with uh, uh, organic uh, coffee or things like that. But do you have any information about the way it has been transported from Colombia uh, to your supermarket? No. And in many, many cases, it has a huge impact again on ocean and ocean pollution. So we decided... Uh, is it a true photo? Yes, it is indeed. This is my colleague Rainer in Hamburg with his surfboard in the middle of thousands of containers. Um, so we decided to work with um, that sector of shipping, with ship owners directly, with those who want to improve their way of uh, doing their job. And we are in the process of implementing a certification program with them that will deal with all these um, criteria, I would say. So it's really large, really wide. It's uh, tackle more or less all the different kind of pollution that comes from shipping uh, transportation. We are doing that with the support of a certification program that already exists in North America, Canadian, uh, actually, Alliance Verte. So we are adapting that label to the European context. And the idea is, of course, to make uh, ship owners entering in this kind of uh, certification and to ask them to improve. It's not really a matter of being at the first level or the second or the third. 
yes, of course, the objective is all of them to be at the fifth level. But the idea is every year, every year, to have an auto assessment of what they are doing and to, see, and, and to improve. And we will um, uh, not only ask them for an auto assessment, but we will also uh, provide like an external assessment with a third part external uh, um, professional dedicated to that uh, to be sure that uh, we have a real improvement in their way of doing their shipping. So that's what I wanted to share more than all with you. Just one more thing. Um, we can hear a lot about tech and innovation and technology. It's really good, it's really important. It can bring a lot of solutions, but not only tech will have a long-term impact on the ocean pollution. Also, your will, your involvement, your commitment. So please get committed and join the movement. It can be software the movement, it can be extinction, rebellion movement, or other movements, whatever, but please join, join, join us on board. Thank you very much.